Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics part 11. We do this series at the beginning of every single month. We go not only through Bitcoin, but the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization as a whole from inception and try to gauge where we may be in the current market cycle. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So again, this is part 11 in our series, the first of every month, and we have our entire cryptocurrency asset class market capitalization on the y-axis. You can see we're coming in hot at just over a model's $2 trillion. And we look at it and today the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization is at 2.2 trillion with our trend line our fair value trend line coming in at a more modest 644 billion representing an overvaluation of approximately 245 percent however if history is any indication we can go into overvaluation regimes for years we can also be in the undervaluation region for, for years as well. So it just sort of gauges where we may be in the grand scheme of the market cycle. Okay, so what you notice is you see there's general periods of accumulation when we're undervalued and no one really wants to touch crypto, at least not, you know, not like say um, people that are not just diehard crypto fans. These are the people that, that you know, the, 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 Crypto, I would say the people that really see the vision of crypto over the grand scheme of the market cycle, they're the ones that generally are actively accumulating when we're down here, and, and a lot of people don't want to be part of crypto. And, and, and then up here, this is when the general mainstream, it, it goes mainstream again, and, and then everyone starts buying. But again, down here is when all your family and friends are, are, you know, are, are poking, fun if you, <laughs> poking fun at you, asking you how your cryptocurrency investments are going. And then up here, they're they're texting you, um, you know. So how's Bitcoin doing? Uh, and they're they're wondering if they should buy. So our general accumulation phases. We also have our three major peaks to the asset classes market cycle. And notice where we currently are. So it does not appear at a at a quick glance that we are anywhere close to our current market cycle top. Now we we should note that our this green line is just a shifted version of the red one. And so this first one went well above it. The second one went um, only slightly above it. The third one came down to it or came right up to it. This one's probably not going to make it all the way there, but it does seem like there's some wiggle room, right? It, it seems like there's plenty of room for us to go before a theoretical market cycle top. And the best way we can look at that is to take the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market capitalization and our fair value trend line. We also shifted it by 100% so that anything undervalued over here is coming in just between say zero and 100% because this is a logarithmic scale, remember? And what you notice is that our undervaluation regime is over here, okay? We, we, we get those every cycle and then we go up into these higher, these, these areas where we're, where we're significantly overvalued compared to the fair value. And you can see we had our little 2019 bubble, our little mini bubble, uh, and we've, we've made comparisons before between this cycle and two cycles ago, okay? Now, I will be the first to say that, and, I, and I've said this every single video basically, every market cycle will be remembered for its own characteristics, okay? Each cycle will be remembered for its own characteristics. We There will not be a, you know, an identical cycle. They, they won't match each other completely. There will be differences. And so again, I think as we navigate through this, we need to have an open mind as to when it could theoretically happen. If we go up to the top here this September, then so be it. If it takes us longer, then so be it. But I think we need to be we we need to maintain some level of flexibility and then we can see how things unfold on the charts and then come to to some more reasonable conclusions once that happens. So one of the things we also discussed is the similarities between the interest cycle volatility of our current market cycle with two cycles ago. Okay, so we had our, our first major capitulation, the green bubble, our 2019 pump, this one was back over here in 2011 and 2012, and you can see that this one took a bit longer, right? So we came down and immediately went up. This one we came down and it took a little while to gear, uh, to gear up. Then we had another capitulation down to the yellow bubble, then back up, poking our head above the fair value, the blue one, and then back down to the red one. Okay, our final capitulation here, our pandemic capitulation here, and then back up. 
And so one of the things we've discussed is the idea that if you look at the overvaluation here, it was 2000%, this one was around 700%, it represents about a one third difference. If we were to go one third from here to here, we, are, we, are, we have in fact hit those levels. Now this is a very dubious extrapolation because you know extrapolating from just one data point is, is very hard to do, but it's just to show you where we could be in the cycle. Again, I will contend that it's very possible that we just continue moving up and, and maybe we correct later on, but we just wanna to continue to see how this plays out uh, on the first of every month. Of course, on the first of every month, you can see we have, because the last time we drew this bubble up here, we were actually all the way over here. And since then, we've made that, that, that move up even further. So it sort of feels like we're at a crossroads, okay? It sort of feels like we're at a crossroads. Bitcoin is, you know, right now it's at like 57 to 58K. Um, the prior all-time high is, is just shy of 65K. Clearly, if Bitcoin went back into price discovery mode, the, the entire cryptocurrency asset classes, market capitalization would start moving up significantly again. And, and then we'll have to see where we are on this curve. Now, you might think that it looks like we're close. This is still a logarithmic scale, so this would be 400%. We need to get to 800% before we're even within like shouting distance of this sort of macro level governing trend line. Now, I don't think we're gonna go identically up to it. We could go just below it, we could go just above it, but I do think it, short, it sort of shows where we may be within the grand scheme of the market cycle. And whenever we do make it up to this level, then the risk at that point is going to be incredibly high incredibly high. So one of the things I, I wanted to mention is if we don't, if we continue moving up, let's say we continue moving up for a couple more months, does it negate the idea of a double peak cycle? It could potentially negate the idea of a double peak cycle. And, you know, if, if, if Bitcoin continues moving up through the summer and we see it going up in May and June and July and August, then it's going to be it's going to make the double peak cycle less and less of a possibility. However, if we go look at what the actual double peak cycle looked like, these are two month candles. Okay, so these are two month candles. And what you'll notice is that in this double peak cycle of Bitcoin, uh, it says eight, but it was actually nine. I, I, th I thought I changed it to nine. It was nine two month candles in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we had nine two-month candles in a row. Where are we today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're in our ninth. We just started our ninth. Our ninth candle will go from May until the end of June, okay? So it might seem like if we don't immediately put in a local top that it's decisively not a double peak cycle. But again, looking at this chart, um, and now, okay, so now it says nine on both of them. Looking at this chart, we can see some similarities here. Okay, nine two-month candles in a row, followed by a cool-off period, followed by another major move up. And so right now we're in our ninth two-month candle in a row. Okay, and for this to be green like this one was, we would need to we would need to um, stay green, or we would need to close, uh, you know, around. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was around, you know, it was around the $58,000 mark. So we would need to close above that level by the end of June. Okay, so on the on the monthly, on the June monthly close, the, the monthly open of July, we would need to close green, and then we would very much be emulating what happened two cycles ago, and then we'll see what happens after it if we sort of get that cool off period for, for maybe four months or so. Um, that's what happened over here. I mean, these are just two candles, but remember they're two month candles where we just more or less went sideways. So that would be four months potentially of sideways movement, maybe even more. Um, and so I, I think that's something to keep an eye on. So it's po it's certainly possible that if, if Bitcoin moves up uh, too quickly over the next two months, then it, I think there's a decent chance that it would negate the idea of a double peak cycle. On the other hand, if we if we sort of just keep marginally moving up, like you know we, we went to 58k, then a month later we went to 61k, then a month later we went to 64k. So you know if we then go to 67k and then 70k, uh, we're still going to be sort of within this region, and it would still more or less align with what we saw happen two cycles ago. So we're we're going to continue to discuss the idea of a double peak cycle, especially given how crazy this move has been. Right? We'll continue to discuss the idea of a double peak cycle. 
um, until in, until it's completely proven otherwise that it you know once we're too far gone okay basically the idea is once we're too far gone at some point it, it, it becomes all right probably not going to be a double peak cycle if we don't actually cool off for a few months um, sometime over the next five or six months okay so then we go back and look at this chart and so the obvious the obvious implication is hey guys if we go up soon great if we go up soon great i i don't know that we would make it to a 10 trillion dollar market cap for the entire asset class as a whole um i would probably be looking more for you know six to eight trillion uh if we if it takes us longer and we go up and we we continue moving up into 2022 uh and even going into mid to late 2022 then i think there's a higher probability we could go to an entire crypto market capitalization of 10 trillion dollars and if it goes even later than that then we could be going over 10 trillion dollars i think there's a good chance we will make it to approximately 10 trillion dollar market capitalization this market cycle plus or minus a few trillion and as always that brings me to my my last point as we go to bed as we go to bed each night we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion among friends Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. We have the premium list. You can find a link to that in the description below into the cryptoverse.com. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, turn on your alerts. I'll see you next time. Bye.